YouTube is a platform where you stream yourself. You post videos about yourself, what you do, and what you think about certain things. You desperately search for anybody who agrees with you, and you flex to everybody else how many people follow you. People who agree with you are called subscribers, and the number of people who agree with you is called the subscriber count. It would be cool if everybody subscribed to everybody and everybody agreed, but that's not a reality, especially on the internet. A primary example of people talking about themselves and expressing their opinions slash thoughts about things is Storytime Animators. Lots of viewers enjoy Storytime Animators because they sound relatable. They stream about their own life experiences, which are often exaggerated for dramatic purposes, and offer commentary on them. Storytime Animators establish themselves separately from the normal animation community by using an animated persona, usually themed after their interests, to convey the messages. The video itself isn't the only thing that's animated, the artist's opinions are also captured in motion by the avatar that's on screen. Oftentimes, the animator will just speak casually and opinionatedly. There are some animators who will discuss the facts or topic of interest objectively. Lots of care goes into the writing, the scripts, which get recorded before the animation process begins. Sometimes that can take up to a month. For me, I do it in, like, two to five hours. Of course, my videos aren't about in-depth research topics, and animating YouTube is not my job. But is a month really necessary? Writing scripts is not that hard for YouTube videos. Just saying what's on your mind, right? Obviously, there are lots of different kinds of videos. Take, for example, a video essay. That's literally just an essay with editing. There are videos where people talk about movie reviews, which is also just an essay. Some videos try to convince you that something is terrible, which is also just an essay. Maybe, maybe this video, maybe this script isn't just an oh, this is awesome. Remember in middle school when you had to write 500 word essays? And in high school, you had to write 1,000 word essays? Maybe some of you in college had to write 2,500 word essays. No, just, just me. But you all do remember how much you hated writing them, right? I'm not gonna need this in real life, you asked and debated. How are book reports going to help me serve food at McDonald's? Here you are, you need it now, if you're making a video script anyway. The reason you need to write an essay and not just write down your personal thoughts is because nobody likes a rambling Randy. If you can't organize your thoughts, you can't convince anybody of anything. For that reason, storytime animators will often have scripts. With a planned out story to tell and time to simmer over what's being said, story can sometimes feel ingenuine. It takes great skill to write something that sounds both genuine, casual, and funny. Additionally, storytime animators will run out of stories to tell, so they'll make things which will be significantly less relatable and funny because, well, it didn't actually happen. Personally, writing an essay script is much easier than writing a funny, relatable comedy story about my childhood. Like that one time I... Oops, I almost did it. With an essay script, you can research data and tell objective facts without any subjectivity. Research biases and weighted selections will happen from time to time, but most of what you're talking about is a description and a summary. Mistakes obviously happen during an experiment and, well, we're all human after all. Or are we? On the other hand, personal experiences are told through the lens of the storyteller, so you can't get all the facts. Additions must also be present to spice up the story, or else you won't get anywhere with your comedy. Storytime animators, of course, wouldn't be what they are without animation. I like to categorize storytime animators into two categories, animators and PNG tubers. You see, an animation is when something moves. I not mean moving as in a square moving back and forth on a screen. I mean a fluent or bouncy transition between positions. And animatic, on the other hand, is a collection of static images, kind of like a storyboard, with sound and minor transitions added between them to improve flow. Unmoving, minorly expressive picture of a fictional character which occasionally jumps back and forth in excitement is, in fact, not an animation. Being called a PNG tuber is an insult in the animation community because of the association with streamers and YouTubers like Jellybean. But I'm not categorizing based on personality, solely the movement or transition style. I mean, by that logic, even I'm a PNG tuber. I'm neither skilled nor dedicated enough to add fluent transitions and human-like movements to my avatar. Contrarily, I don't sculpt every five seconds and angrily shout at the camera. Yeah, <laughs> mad emoji. PNG tubers can be funny though, even if their content is scripted. Consider YouTubers like The Odd Ones Out, something else YT's earlier skits, and Dan Plan. I mean, their characters are usually statically expressed, 
slightly bouncing between positions, and their backgrounds and stories don't involve a ton of moving parts. Colin's out will occasionally feature smooth animation, the majority of the time he's standing still and his mouth isn't really moving. On the other side of the spectrum is Ginger Pale and Comics. Their videos are typically full motion and they don't always include personal stories. Consider Ginger Pale's most popular video, Pop Culture, or his newest one, Conversation with ADHD. In them, you'll find that practically everything is moving. The only things that are not moving are the backgrounds, which aren't usually supposed to move anyway. This way, we can clearly distinguish between the two types of storytime uh, YouTubers. If you've been paying attention, you'll notice I fall into the former category because... Well, I just don't care to do full animations. Call me lazy, I just don't care. I could, but they would be bad. With less work, I can release a video with about one week of production. Drawing pictures takes a long time for me. Plus, I have college. Plus, I have a job. Plus, I'm working alone. Meanwhile, even with a team of animators, writers, and editors, storytellers like Domix and The Odd Ones Out can take upwards to four months to release another video. Those are excessively high-quality videos, sure. Lastly, storytime YouTubers, both animators and PNG alike, always have personalities that set each other apart. Ginger Pale is ironic. The Odd Ones Out is erratic. Something else YT is laid back. Domix is... Domix. If you ever become a storytime YouTuber, you need to be unique and apart from everyone else. Maybe you need to tell excessively dark stories. Maybe you need to be a phenomenal artist. Maybe you have to, I don't know, be gay or something. In conclusion, there's much more to storytime animation than meets the eye. It's not just a glorified moving podcast. But it's kind of a glorified moving podcast. If your animations don't tell anecdotes, you're not a storytime animator. If your animations don't move, you're not a storytime animator. If your animations aren't funny, stop making jokes. Nobody wants to hear them. Subscribe to me on YouTube. I have no other social media. Join my Discord server in the description. This is Kyle. Thanks for watching.